guys, welcome back to Andy's Dinosaur Reviews, and today we have another brand new Mattel Jurassic World Dominion release to take a look at, and this time we have Owen and the Parasaurolophus, but Owen is kind of like your cowboy version of Owen, I guess you could call him, as you see at the beginning of Jurassic World Dominion, and you also have a kind of like a juvenile Parasaurolophus here that more so resembles the newer uh, color scheme that they had come up with for Jurassic World Dominion. This figure has actually been released in the past in the Roland Tembo set, but it's still pretty cool to see it now with this coloration on, and I think it looks, you know, pretty decent. There's actually quite a bit of color for a Mattel figure on this one. We could have, of course, used a little more paint out onto the tail, but for the most part, it looks okay. However, I think Owen looks super off, just like the Ian Malcolm figure did. Like, his likeness just looks really strange from what I can see so far. But your packaging, you know, it's pretty much the standard. And then, of course, just like we saw on the Ian Malcolm Velociraptor set, we have an image here on the back kind of showing off the set. And then down here, the other sets that are in this wave of story pack figures, which the Raptor set we have reviewed already. And then there's also the Maisie and Lystrosaurus and Velociraptor beta set as well. So let's go ahead and pop this out of the box right now and check it out. So here is our Parasaurolophus. And then we've got our little lasso right here and then our Owen Grady figure. And they look pretty cool. They don't look amazing, but the Paris Rolifus, I think, definitely looks better than the paint variant that we had in the Roland Tembo set. But as a whole, I think the set looks pretty much as I expected it to be. There's no crazy shocking surprises with this one. So let's jump straight to a closer look at all of this right now. So starting with our Owen Grady, you can see again that it looks sort of like Owen, but just like Ian Malcolm, I feel like it almost looks more like if we had an Owen Grady stunt double rather than Owen Grady. It doesn't look super far off. I don't think it looks quite as off as the Ian Malcolm figure did, but still does look a little bit strange. You can, however, see that the sculpt and everything looks great, though. The paintwork as well looks great, like there's some very nice fine detail to Owen, and some beautiful paintwork on top of everything. We have his kind of facial hair here painted out very nicely. You can also see the lips have paintwork. The eyes are also placed perfectly, as well as the eyebrows. The hair detail also looks really good. We have a brown tone for the hair. And then, of course, he has the jacket on that we see him wearing at the beginning of Fallen Kingdom when he's chasing down the Parasaurolophus. And it's a very long jacket. You can see it goes pretty far down almost the entire length of his body, but... It's sculpted really nicely, like you can see that there is a lot of really nice kind of movement shown within the jacket, and of course lots of beautiful detail, especially a lot of kind of wrinkling and stuff here in the sleeves. He is of course wearing gloves because it is very cold in that scene, so you would expect him to be wearing gloves. They're painted with a nice lighter variation of brown, and they look pretty good. On the inside here, and I believe the jacket would be removable, but the sleeves are going to, of course, stay that same darker brown that we have for the jacket. But you can see his shirt looks really nice as we have a nice striping effect running down the shirt. Also some nice creasing and everything within the shirt area of Owen and just generally some nice paintwork to that area. You can also see the belt as we move down. And then he's got some jeans on and you can see they are a nice bluish tone. And we also have tons of creases and everything within the jeans within the pants here of Owen, which looks very, very nice. And you can see his boots as well look really good and uh, very nicely and very precisely painted. I don't really see any sloppiness on this Owen figure at all. I would imagine the articulation is probably all the same that we usually have. So you've got the neck articulation. You've also got arm articulation. His arm looks super weird when I pull it up right there. It just looks so oddly thin in that spot. But you also have elbow articulation, and you can also swivel both the elbow as well as the shoulder joint. So some nice, very smooth articulation there. You've also got a swiveled midsection. And then, of course, the leg articulation here in the hip which can also go out away from the body, even though the, you know, jacket there kind of tries to stop it, but you've also got the knee articulation on top of everything. And I'd imagine the knee yeah, absolutely could swivel as well. So a very nice looking figure, not perfectly portraying Owen, I would say, as far as like the facial features, but it's still pretty good overall. And then you, of course, have that lasso that he uses to 
capture the Parasaurolophus, and uh, that looks pretty good as well, but you're not really going to find too much to talk about when it comes to that. It's definitely, like, movable. You can, without question, kind of fold it and move it, so there is some play with that as well. And then we've got ourselves the Parasaurolophus, and the Parasaurolophus looks pretty good for the most part. We have reviewed the sculpt of this Parasaurolophus in the past, so this time we really only need to take a look at anything that would be different compared to the previous one, and that, of course, would be the paint scheme and paint application so straight away starting up here at the head sculpt you can see that we have a nice light gray for a large portion of the face you can also see that that gray runs up into the beak but then we have this really nice bluish tone that starts in the beak and runs up here over the top of our Parasaurolophus's crest and then you can see that we have a very dark gray maybe bordering on a black that kind of stripes and designs in here and also does the same up into the crest area of the Parasaurolophus back and forth with those blues, and it looks really nice. The eye, however, is just a straight up black coloration. It does have a gloss coat, you can see it's shining there, but from certain views and everything, it almost doesn't look like we have eye paint on the figure at all. I'm a little confused as to why they chose to go that route with the eye paint for this one. I feel like some sort of a coloration in a pupil, like a yellow or something along those lines, even a brown and a pupil could have looked a lot nicer, or even a light gray similar to what we have in the lower part of the face there, but they chose to just give us the black eye regardless. You can see that that light gray continues to run down here into the throat region and then stripe up, and again, the darker gray kind of stripes back and forth with the lighter gray. You can see, though, that it tapers off pretty quickly in the chest region. As you move down the course of the figure, you can see that we basically just have that dark gray. It's more like a black, I would say, coloration right there. And then as you lead out into the fingers, it kind of looks like we have a gloss coat for them but it's not super obvious definitely no specific nail paint for the figure but they do kind of even on the toenails kind of look like they have a gloss coat to them but then as we lead back up here into the back of the dinosaur and leading down into the stomach you can see that we have this nice light brown as well as that kind of black and blues kind of striping and designing and splotching all over the place as you move through the course of the Parasaurolophus. However, it all abruptly, like very abruptly, stops at the tail. Like, there's no smooth transition here. It just stops dead. Before we lead out into the tail, and the tail is nothing more than that same blackish tone, you do have a little bit more of that light gray running down the thigh, down into the shin, which looks pretty nice. Does help to give it a little bit of a better look as far as you know, adding that extra bit of coloration to it, but I honestly think I would have preferred that they had added that out under the tail instead of the thigh region. And then, of course, the opposing side looks fairly similar. It's definitely not the best Parasaurolophus we've seen. That, of course, would be the Hammond Collection version, but it's still fairly fun, I guess. And if we could pull the Jurassic Facts app code out, of course, it was on the initial site I was looking at. There is the code for you to add this figure to your collection if you would like to, but... It's a pretty fun repaint, it just could have been a little bit better. If you are not familiar with this Parasaurolophus, if you haven't seen the set with Roland Tembo, which I highly recommend checking out the review of here on my channel, as I have reviewed that one in the past, as far as articulation goes, you have some okay looking articulation here in the head and neck region, so you can kind of like maneuver the head pretty much all over the place. As you move down, you do have arm articulation, forward and back. It doesn't move out away from the body or anything. It's just strictly forward and back. Same with the legs, again, forward and back. It does not come out away from the body. And then you've got a swivel tail, and that's really about it as far as this Parasaurolophus goes and the articulation. But as far as a size goes, and even though we have measured this one in the past, why is Owen trying not to stand so desperately? There we go. Even though we have reviewed this figure in the past, we'll go ahead and give it a measurement again because we only did review it once before. So lengthwise, you were looking at about 7.5 inches or 19 centimeters. And then for a height, about 3 and 3 quarter inches or around 9.5 centimeters there to the top of the Parasaurolophus crest. And then for a height on Owen, you are looking at right around in that three and three quarter inch range or around nine and a half centimeters, pretty much like you would expect for most Mattel humans. For a size comparison, there is Mr. Papo T-Rex, the Attack Pack Colovasaurus, and Robert Muldoon from the Mattel Jurassic World toy line next to the Parasaurolophus and Owen. From this vantage point, it almost looks like Owen and Muldoon are trying to hold hands, but you can again see that the Parasaurolophus here is right around that kind of attack pack, ferocious pack, wild pack size range, and of course, both Owen and Muldoon size up quite nicely to each other. Muldoon's slightly taller, it seems, just because he's wearing the hat, but overall, they are a very similar size.
So this brand new Owen and Juvenile Parasaurolophus set is pretty fun, but it's just not as great as it could be. It's not bad by any means, but the Parasaurolophus, even though it looks really cool for the coloration we have for it, could have just looked a little bit better had they just added the slightest amount of paint application out onto the tail. I feel like that's the thing that kills it the most is the lack of paint on the tail and the abrupt transition between the paint on the back and the tail. And of course, the eyes being painted a different color other than the same dark tone, making it almost appear as though it doesn't have eye paint at all could have helped, but it still does look pretty nice. It's got a fairly flashy looking appearance and definitely some beautiful tones of color used for it. So I really do quite like the coloration and the appearance of this Parasaurolophus more so than the first version. It just could have been a little bit better. And then Owen, <sighs> I mean, we've had so many Owens in the past. Did we really need another one? I mean, kind of, I guess, just because this is a different look for Owen, and it is a pretty cool scene from Jurassic World Dominion, and of course, being, you know, a brand new film with more Owen, we're going to have more Owen figures, and it's not terrible, but it's not the best Owen I think that we've had. I just feel like the likeness, for some reason, doesn't look all that great on this one. It just looks a little off to me, but outside of that, the overall appearance kind of nicely matches and replicates that scene from Dominion. I feel like they did do a good job as far as the clothing and everything. And then, of course, you've got lots of articulation for Owen on top of everything. So I think Owen's kind of like a 75% nice figure, 25% not that great. And again, the reason it's not that great and the reason I wouldn't give it a 100% awesomeness recommendation is just because the likeness is a little off. But we also, of course, have the lasso that Owen is using to try to capture himself a Parasaurolophus as well, which is a pretty fun little addition to this set, but nothing amazing. Still, as a whole, though, it's a fairly fun set and one that I feel like is worth picking up. So if you are interested in grabbing this, I'll include a link in the description to where you can do that on Big Bad Toy Store. That's where I purchased mine, so make sure you check the link down in the description. Go grab yourself this very cool Paris Relifus story set, and make sure you also like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next review. Thanks for watching.